hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video i will be talking about cms final rule for medicaid advantage in part d for calendar year 2023 there were lots of changes so i am trying to cover all of them in two videos so this is part one and uh, stay tuned for the other one let's get started First one on the list is lowering beneficiary cost sharing at the pharmacy counter. In recent years, more Part D plans have been entering into arrangements with pharmacies that may pay less money for dispensed drugs if pharmacies do not meet certain criteria. The negotiated price for a drug is the price reported to CMS at the point of sale, which is used to calculate beneficiary cost sharing and generally adjudicate the Part D benefit. With the emergence of these payment arrangements, the negotiated price is frequently higher than the final payment to pharmacies. Higher negotiated prices lead to higher beneficiary cost sharing and faster beneficiary advancement through the Part D benefit. CMS is finalizing a policy that requires Part D plans to apply all price concessions they receive from network pharmacies to the negotiated price at the point of sale so that the beneficiary can also share in the savings. Specifically, CMS is redefining the negotiated price as the baseline or lowest possible payment to a pharmacy effective January 1, 2024. CMS is applying the finalized policy across all phases of the Part D benefit. This policy reduces beneficiary out-of-pocket costs and improves price transparency and market competition in the Part D program. Marketing and Communications Oversight CMS is finalizing changes to marketing and communications requirements that will protect Medicare beneficiaries by ensuring they receive accurate and accessible information about Medicare coverage. These include strengthening oversight of third-party marketing organizations to detect and prevent the use of confusing or potentially misleading activities to enroll beneficiaries in Medicare Advantage and Part D plans, reinstating the inclusion of a multi-language insert in all required documents to inform beneficiaries of the availability of interpreter services. The changes also include codifying enrollee ID card standards, requirements related to a disclaimer for limited access to preferred cost-sharing pharmacies, plan website instructions on how to appoint a representative, and website posting of enrollment instructions and forms. Beneficiary access to care during disasters and emergencies. To ensure that beneficiaries have uninterrupted access to needed services, CMS is revising and clarifying time frames and standards associated with coverage obligations of Medicare Advantage plans during disasters and emergencies. Current regulations have special requirements for Medicare Advantage plans during disasters or emergencies, including requirements for plans to cover services provided by non-contracted providers and to waive gatekeeper referral requirements. The final rule will clarify that a Medicare Advantage plan must comply with the special requirements when there is both a declaration of disaster or emergency, including a public health emergency, and disruption in access to health care in the Medicare Advantage plan service area. Past performance. To hold plans to a higher standard, CMS is finalizing additional bases for denying an MA or Medicare Advantage and Part D organization's application for a new contract or a service area expansion of an existing contract based on an organization's past performance. The current regulations permit CMS to deny applications from organizations under sanction or failing CMS's net worth requirements during the performance period. The final rule adds star ratings 2.5 or lower, bankruptcy or bankruptcy filings, and exceeding a CMS designated threshold for compliance actions as basis for CMS denying a new application or a service area expansion application. 
Network adequacy. To strengthen its application standards and oversight, CMS is requiring that Medicaid Advantage applicants demonstrate they have a sufficient network of contracted providers to care for beneficiaries before CMS will approve an application for a new or expanded Medicaid Advantage contract. CMS believes that requiring applicants to demonstrate compliance with network adequacy standards as part of the application process will strengthen their oversight of an organization's ability to provide an adequate network of providers to deliver care to Medicaid Advantage enrollees. This change will also provide Medicaid Advantage organizations with information regarding their network adequacy ahead of bid submissions mitigating current issues with late changes to the bid that may impact bid integrity. Due to the changes in the timing of the network adequacy reviews and potential difficulties Medicaid Advantage organizations may face with building a full network almost one year in advance of the contract year, CMS also will allow applicants a 10 percentage point credit towards the percentage of beneficiaries residing within published time and distance standards. Additionally, based on comments received, CMS is finalizing a change to allow applicants to use letters of intent or LOIs in lieu of a signed provider contract at the time of application and for the duration of the application review to meet network adequacy standards. Once the coverage year starts on January 1st, organizations must be in full compliance. The 10 percentage point credit and permission to use LOIs will no longer apply and signed provider and facility contracts must be in place for the network. Greater transparency in medical loss ratio or MLR reporting. To increase value for taxpayers and beneficiaries, CMS is reinstating MLR reporting requirements that were in effect for contract years 2014 through 2017. The current regulations require that Medicaid Advantage organizations and Part D sponsors report to CMS the percentage of revenue spent on patient care and quality improvement and the amount of any remittance that must be paid to CMS for failure to meet the 85% minimum MLR requirement. The final rule requires Medicaid Advantage organizations and Part D sponsors to report the underlying cost and revenue information needed to calculate and verify the MLR percentage and remittance amount, if any. In addition, the final rule will allow CMS to require that Medicaid Advantage organizations report the amounts they spend on various types of supplemental benefits not available under original Medicare, example, dental, vision, hearing, transportation. Part C and Part D quality rating system. CMS is finalizing a technical change to enable CMS to calculate 2023 Part C star ratings for the three healthcare effectiveness data and information set or HEDIS measures collected through the Health Outcome Survey or HOS. They are monitoring physical activity, reducing the risk of falling and improving bladder control. Without this technical change, CMS would be unable to calculate 2023 star ratings for these measures for any Medicaid Advantage contract since all contracts qualify for the extreme and uncontrollable circumstances adjustment for COVID-19. CMS is also finalizing a series of changes that were established in the March 31, 2020 COVID-19 Interim Final Rule with Comment or IFC and the September 2, 2020 COVID-19 Interim Final Rule with Comment to the 2021 and 2022 star ratings to accommodate the disruption to data collection posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Enrolling input on dual eligible special needs plans operations. CMS believes the health system is stronger when they listen to the people they serve. Federal rules require enrollee advisory committees for Medicaid managed care plans that cover Medicaid long-term services and supports or LTSs and for programs of all-inclusive care for the elderly or PACE organizations. CMS applies similar requirements for demonstration Medicare Medicaid plans.
CMS is finalizing a requirement that all DSNPs or dual eligible special needs plans establish and maintain one or more enrollee advisory committees for each state in which the DSNP is offered and that DSNPs consult with advisory committees on various issues including ways to improve health equity for underserved populations. This is it for today. Hope you found this information helpful. Stay tuned for part two. Hope to see you next time. Bye now.